Hello, my name is Kiragos Parskeva. Today we are going to talk about isokinetic dynamometer. An overview for the isokinetic dynamometer is uh, until the late uh, uh, 1970s, 75% of all isokinetic research and application was focused on a single joint system, the knee. This pattern is no longer present thanks to the recent adv advisements rehabilitation and knee surgery. Isokinetic dynamometers haven't altered much in terms of design since they first became available in the 1960s, save for special purpose units. The design is still superior to any other joint from testing and rehabilitation, according to Dvir in 1995. Although the knee has two primary articulations, the tibiofemoral, the, the, the tibiofemoral component is the one that is important in this section. The majority of testing and exercise is done in the sitting position, while absolute hamstring testing is best done in the prone laying, laying position since it provides for a wider ra range of motion, and functional testing is best done in the standing position. Flexion and extension can be done in a variety of situations, including seated, which is the most common, prone laying, supine uh, lying, and standing. So, seated position is the most stable posture for extension and flexion testing. However, flexion is limited unless the individual can go extremely close to the seat edge. Overall, is the best position. Because the chair and body act as tight distal stabilizers, seat test testi test testing assumes minimal fever, uh, femoral motion. Now, uh, we are going to speak for the application. Uh, the individual typically sits with their back and, and thigh supported, forming a right angle at the hip. The thigh support should be long enough to allow for adequate knee flexion Allow two fingers of, of space between the chair and the back of your calf. This would be placed towards the distal position of the thigh, allowing 75 to 90 degrees of flexion in most tests. This is the maximum knee flexion available. Uh, is approximately 110 degrees whilst retaining reproducibility. This position allows for maximum extension. However, there is some controversy about whether extension beyond 20 degrees should be allowed, minus 20 degrees. As an absolute maximum, do not test beyond zero degrees extension. Indiv individuals find constraints beyond five degrees unpleasant uh, and will perform significant isometric contractions to try to complete the, the range. So keep to, to zero degrees if possible. Although seat recline from semi recline to upright uh, 40, from 40 to 19 degrees has no influence on quadriceps strength. It does have a considerable Im impact on hamstring strength. The best angle is roughly 80 degrees with a corresponding change in seat angle recline to give a 90 degrees at the hips. This is the best posture for both extensors and flexors since it, it provides for the recording of good data in the shortest amount of time. Alignment of the biological axis of rotation at the knee. The best, the best three is drive. Now we are going to talk about stabilization uh, in seated position. While femoral and pelvic strapping are commonly used for stabilization, 
The best setup is a little more complicated. The amount of study publication on the issue is astonishing. Magnusson et al. in 1992 discovered that stability using a thoracic strap and the hands resulted in the maximum quadriceps strength, while no stabilization resulted in the lowest score. The usage of a thoracic strap was also shown to improve quadriceps strength by Hart et al. in 1984. But Hanton and Ramberg in 1988 found the exact opposite. When compared to minimum stabilization, which consisted of merely gripping the edges of the testing bench using a thoracic pelvic and femoral strap reduced quadricep strength. Courier in 1977 discovered that while measuring iso isometric strength, clutching the table and hand strength areas, gripping the handles did not show sub, uh, such substan substantial improvements. Bohannon in 1986 expanded on, this, on these findings when he compared various grasping devices to simply clutching the table and discovered significant differences. As a result, Hand grips are not an option on most isokinetic dynamometers. Now we move on to attachments. The, re the resistance pad is placed on a level with the inferior section of the pad, immediately superior to the medial malleolus, shown here while testing normal participants. In, the, in other words, the bottom of the pad touches the top of the medial malleolus. This is because Kramer et al. in 1989 reported that 70% of all subject, subjects regarded this position to be the most pleasant, with the other 30% preferring a position at two-thirds of the useful leg, leg length. After you have spent an hour determining the usable leg length and then calculating a position two-thirds down this, your subject will be so fed up the results will be negated by poor subject motivation. When using any chosen position, the patient should be able to dorsiflex their foot as much as possible. The resistant pad will slide up and down the leg to some degree in all topics. So be careful not to over tighten the strap around the shank. This is because of the change in, in joint access through range. According to Sewers et al. 1975, the strength of both extensors and flexors decreases as the resistant pad is positioned closer to the knee. This, pa this pattern was observed at all test speeds. According to Taylor and Casey 1986, the origin of this condition is decreased intramuscular pressure, which causes the knee axis to deviate more from the actuator axis, or in other words, the axis of the knee rotation becomes greater, which means that the axis of rotation you set at the machine must be further away from it. A chain of, of up to 5% in the recorded values can be predicted for every one centimeter change. Kramer et al. In 1989, backed up these finding, findings. However, it's probably not that simple. Moving the resistance cell closer to the knee also shortens the dynamometer application arm and increases the angle between the arm and the shank, all of which contribute to a general loss of muscular strength when combined with changes in the neurophysiological inhibitory mechanism, discomfort, and pain. Consist con consistency in the position of the resistant pads is therefore crucial. Now we are going to talk about gravity correction. Gravity adjustment is critical in these movements since le the levier arm can be very lengthy and heavy. Gravity aids the hamstrings but uh, hinders the quadriceps. Nevertheless, if you test the same individual without gravity adjustment, the results will be quite similar as long as the participant does not gain or lose a significant amount of weight. Heavy and light footwear should be avoided. 
Now we move on to speeds. However, uh, various speeds in the knee have been used extensively, extensively, extensively in research, including 60, 90, and uh, 120 degrees per second for strength, and 240 and 300 and upwards for endurance. Simply pick one of these speeds that best suits your needs. Now we move on on the results and interpretation. When looking at the ratio, ratio between the right and left sides of the knee, a 0 to 10% difference between the sides is normal. Anything above this indicates a muscular imbalance that should be addressed. The quadriceps are usually twice as strong as the hamstrings. The hamstrings are 50% of the quads, hence the ham, hamstrings quadriceps ratio is 50%. 50%. This percentage can, can range from 80% in long distance events to 30% in sprinti sprinting events in athletes. The peak torque angle for flexion is 30 degrees. Peak torque angle for extension is 17 degrees of, of flexion. So you can identify some diseases through the graphs such as mesial dysfunction, torque cartilage, osteochondritis, patellofemoral joint, anterior knee pain, and uh, anterior cruciate ligament deficiency. According to Gena et al. in 1991, uh, who tested male athletes uh, on extensors and flexors, concentric, concentric, uh, 60 degrees per second, the values were 260 with standard devi deviation 59 on extensors and 140 with standard deviation 28 in flexor flexors and in 300 degrees uh, per second concentric concentric on ext extensors flexors where um, 146 um, with standard deviation uh, 27 on extensors and on flexors 88 with standard deviation 20. This is the results of our participant. So according to our re results um, on the isokinetic dynamometer of our participants we can see that uh, on the right foot we have uh, 237 on uh, on peak torque and on the uh, on the left foot 221 on the concentric concentric test at 60 degrees per second and we have a 7% uh, deficit uh, if we compare our results with the uh, with the study, we see that the scores are a little bit low. And for the um, uh, flexors, we have on the right leg 104, and for the left leg 127, where is 18% uh, uh, deficit. For the test of 300, 300 degrees uh, per second on concentric, concentric, on extensors and flexors, the peak torque uh, where for the right foot 121 on the extensors and the left foot for extensors 104 with a 13% deficit. And for the flexors, 61 for, for both feet with 0% deficit. As we can see, the results of our participant is a low with some imbalances, so he needs to work on it. Thank you for watching.